Hey everybody, before you escape, I have just one last tutorial to record for you. Uh, Sarah had sent an email asking about using images for um, reflection or for roughness maps. So um, this will just be a really quick tutorial on how to use images for roughness maps uh, so that you can break up your reflections for more realism. So let's just set up, we've got a brand new scene here, nothing going on. We'll uh, go into render settings. We're going to use Redshift to demonstrate this. So I'll go into the Redshift renderer. And uh, we'll create a dome light. So we have a light for our scene. And uh, just in case you miss it, on source images, I've got my 360 image of the main building. So we'll load that in. That's JPEG. There we are. And let's uh, just put some geometry out into this scene, just a simple cube, nothing going, nothing special. And uh, right now I don't have any uh, redshift materials on there, it's just a flat Lambert, so there's our little gray cube in, on the floor in uh, Grand Hall. So if we want to, and it's, it's floating by the way, right, so it's not really on the ground. I'll just move this up a little bit and render. All right, so there we go. Um, Let's go ahead and create a redshift material for this. Right click, assign new material. We'll choose a redshift shader and we'll use the redshift material. And let's fire up IPR so we can start seeing what's going on. And so of course right away you can see some reflection on here. So that's really shiny. Uh, let's zoom in here. All right, so now you can see the reflection on the surface of the cube. And if we dial the roughness up and down here for diffuse, meh, no, no real effect on that really. Um, roughness for diffuse doesn't do much for us. You know, if we turn reflection all the way off by just lowering its weight, here's our diffuse cube, and you can see really dialing up roughness, dialing down roughness, not much of a deal. So. Um, Let's go ahead and focus our attention on the reflection roughness. So let's just go ahead and take away diffuse. So we've got this black cube now. We'll dial up the reflection weight, so that's reflecting really well. And again, you know, reflection roughness has a lot of impact on the look. So with it set to zero, we've got this glass-like material. And if I start dialing it up, basically what the roughness is going to do is blur that reflection. But if I'm just using the value, it's blurring this very uniformly, and of course it still looks very computer generated, right? So what we might want to do is break this up with uh, texture. Now just as a quick demo of how that would work, let's go into Hypershade and take a little more look at this graph the network for this material. Um, before I import an image, let's just try a checkerboard, right? So we can click on the material in reflection, we'll go to reflection roughness, again, not diffuse roughness, reflection roughness, click on the texture selector, and we'll just put in a checkerboard. Now by default, it connects the alpha channel, um, and you see that we've got shiny areas, squares, and we've got uh, rough squares that aren't reflecting. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's alpha channel, the red channel, the green, or the blue. You can't connect color to roughness because it's it's one channel, right? But you can reconnect any one channel. So it could be alpha, but it could be red, green, or blue. And if your image is black and white, red, green, and blue are all the same values anyway. So if we want to take a look at which of these colors, white versus black, are corresponding to the shiny versus rough areas, we can also connect these same values into our diffuse color. So if I go into red, and we go back to our material and re-dial up the weight here of our diffuse. You can see that um, the, I've taken the blue channel and click, you know, plugged it into red. I mean, if we really just want to make this clear, well, it doesn't matter which of these channels, it's all the same. Um, so anywhere we're feeding white value into the red channel over here, we're getting a red hue. And so you can see that the higher the value is, these white values are rough, not reflective. So the black squares are the ones that are shiny. All right, so that's going on. So let's use an image instead. So I'll just select these, delete them out. 
and in this time we'll create instead of a checkerboard we'll go to 2d textures bring in a file now I have a tiff file which happens to have alpha channel so uh, here we go just some black splatter on a white background and um, just to show it does have an alpha channel but we're just going to connect any of the red green blue straight into reflection roughness so we expand that out color grab just the red channel and put that in reflection roughness and what we're seeing here is those black splatters are being reflective so it gives you look kind of like the idea that this might be splattered with wet and so that's really pretty much all there is to it um, let's just see if we go ahead back to our material and turn off our diffuse you can really see the effect of this uh, roughness now if we want a bit more control over this we can use a ramp node to basically um, adjust you know where the white to black levels in this file map to white to black levels in roughness right so I'll just right click create a node and I'll use a 2d ramp and get rid of that uh, we won't need the UV textures because we're going to get our V input value for this ramp from our file. So we'll just set this in between here and we'll take the red channel, connect that to our V value input, right? So we're doing it V ramp. And then we'll just output one of our channels into reflection roughness. Now, so far we haven't really changed anything because all we did here is take the uh, the black values and they're mapped to black and the white values they're mapped to white so um, we're outputting exactly what we put in so if we want more reflection then we just want uh, more black in our roughness channel so I can just dial this black up and you see that I'm you know making that splatter more and more prevalent if we want less we just bring in more white and then we can also add values in the middle, right? So we'll just, uh, you know, expand the white, the use of white here. Here we go. You know, it makes it more and more rough. Um, if we make this black, that's going to make it more and more shiny. So uh, hopefully this helps. A uh, big trick here is to make sure you're using uh, a single channel out of color or alpha and that that single channel is being mapped into reflection roughness. Diffuse roughness isn't really going to give you much of an effect. So I hope that helps. Until next time, have fun, enjoy the break.